the failure can be catastrophic. You can have a failure to fire where the gun just doesn't go bang. You could also have a gun that goes full auto when you don't intend it to. And so you gotta be really, really careful with triggers and trigger modifications. We're gonna talk today about modding your carry gun and what are some of the pros and cons. A foundational framework that we use here at Tenacore to think about basically everything that we do is the priorities of survival. Mindset, tactics, skill, and equipment. They are in that order for a reason because your mindset, your willingness to actually do the thing, and your confidence in doing that thing is way more important than equipment. Equipment is the least important. For most of us in the gun tactical shoot, we spend the vast majority of our time focused on equipment. And so today we're gonna kind of talk about that. And even in the equipment space, like, slight modifications and tweaks to your equipment is even a lower priority. Generally speaking with equipment, we recommend that you purchase and use equipment that is well tested and well validated. We wanna use equipment that is reliable. If you are going to use this equipment to protect your life and the people that you care about, reliability is the most important attribute. Anytime you come along and modify something from its original state, you're changing the reliability. And so the question is how well and how tested is the modification that you're gonna to do to that gun. A common modification that people do is to modify their grip, and modifying their grip can be a useful thing to increase performance. Modifying your grip typically is to increase friction. Friction is important, and changing the grip and modifying it can be useful, but it is often overstated. What I would recommend is that you not modify the grip until you've shot a bunch. Oftentimes what we see with newer shooters is they will do like some stippling or something to the gun and they stipple parts of the gun that you need to have smooth and basically makes it such that the gun is almost unshootable with high round count. So a common place is going to be here on the side of the tang where the inside of your thumb is rubbing. Another place is stippling here underneath the bottom. Those are places where you don't want friction. You want it to be smooth because it's going to rub on the sides of your fingers and cause all sorts of sores and other issues. And in fact, on a Glock, the Glock has the parting seam of the injection molding down the middle, and actually you wanna smooth out that area underneath the trigger guard and not create additional friction there. The next thing we're gonna talk about are sighting systems. So one would be iron sights and the second would be red dots. First with iron sights, many manufacturers use a really low cost, inexpensive sight. Glock is probably the worst at that where they have cheap, crummy plastic sights. And it's pretty much mandatory that you replace those with metal sights. You're gonna to wanna to replace them with metal sights that have some sort of ledge on them that allows you to rack the gun one-handed. You also don't wanna have sights that have too much clutter on them. Funny pictures, U-shaped things, too many dots, too many colors, all of that stuff, particularly on the rear sight. Black iron sights are a perfectly fine, acceptable sighting system. Um, if you want to add something, maybe you add that thing to the front sight. And so a tritium vial, maybe you add a fiber optic rod. Um, then the next thing is going to be a red dot. So a red dot significantly enhances one's ability to shoot um, accurately, particularly at distance. And at this point, I would say it's pretty much mandatory on a carry gun. For a concealment gun, you're gonna want a relatively small size. And so I think the smaller the red dot, generally the better. Um, so approximately the width of the slide and no bigger. For a carry gun, obviously for a duty gun or exposed carry, then a competition, a larger dot and a larger window might be better. But from a concealment standpoint, you want to carry the thing that is most easily concealable. Another common modification is slide milling. I have a gun right here that has some slide milling on it. Um, slide milling is mostly irrelevant. I would say if you want to spend the money and do that, that's fine. It really is not doing anything to increase your performance. And if you're not careful, it can actually decrease performance. So if you remove too much material, you might change everything about the gun and the gun may not cycle correctly. And so generally I would say don't remove a significant amount of material because you don't want to reduce the reliability of the gun. Here I have a stock, this is a Gen 3 Glock 17, has rear factory slide cuts. Obviously for whatever manipulation you're doing on the rear, the rear slide cuts work great. Um, if you're gonna do some sort of front forward of the ejection port manipulation, that also does not require slide cuts if you're using a proper technique of pressing in and it's um, the friction and the leverage there. Slide cuts are not required to reliably rack the gun. The next common modification for concealment guns is magwells. And the pro of a magwell is it's a big, huge funnel. 
And so when you need to do a reload, it makes it much easier. You can just toss that mag up in the air and like catch it inside that mag well and it works great. Challenge is it's harder to conceal. And so it is adding length and width to the very place that you want to remove it for optimal concealment. From a concealment perspective, a mag well is stupid. From a competition perspective or, or duty carry perspective, a mag well is great and is no big deal because you're not trying to hide the gun. So the final thing we're gonna talk about are triggers and trigger modifications. So either replacing the trigger or modifying the trigger in some way. So on a high level, a thing to think about is if the trigger system that you're putting in the gun or the modification that you make to the gun is not well tested, then the failure can be catastrophic. So you can have a failure to fire where the gun just doesn't go bang. You could also have a gun that goes full auto when you don't intend it to. And so you gotta be really, really careful with triggers and trigger modifications. That being said, you know, probably the biggest complaint, particularly about a Glock, is going to be the trigger because it is a heavy trigger pull, it is a long trigger pull, it is not a very crisp trigger pull. They're all very shootable, it has the correct components of a trigger, but it is not as nice as say like a 1911 trigger. And so people oftentimes with a striker fired gun are kind of in search of that nice clean, crisp, short 1911 style um, trigger pull. And so you can replace the trigger in your gun. Um, totally a reasonable thing to do. Generally though, that's again not where I would start Start. So if you're new to guns and you new to shooting, new to carrying, you buy a Gen 5 Glock 19 or Gen 5 Glock in general, they've mostly solved, or they have vastly improved at least, the trigger. So to sum this up, uh, none of this is intended to say, don't do what you want. This is America, you can do whatever you want. If you want to build some range gun that has all kinds of slide cuts and a purple slide and a cool matching magwell and like all the bells and whistles you can possibly imagine. Go and do that and go shoot it and have fun, train with it, take classes, do whatever. Um, but don't fool yourself into thinking that this cool thing that you built, that this Ferrari makes sense to go pick up the milk with. If you want more detail about Glock 19s and why they are a good choice as a carry gun, we did a recent video and you can check that out here.